Do you know there are 10 critical tests that an AI must pass to achieve human-level AGI? In the rapidly evolving field of AI, the quest for human-level artificial general intelligence is both ambitious and uncharted. Whether you are a tech enthusiast, a researcher, or simply curious about the limits of artificial intelligence, this video is a must-watch as it uncovers fascinating world of 10 AI testing criteria. The first criterion on this list has been the subject of intense debate. Let's begin. Number 10, the Alex Garland test. The Alex Garland test is a hypothetical test that is inspired by Alex Garland's 2014 film Ex Machina, in which a programmer named Caleb is invited by his CEO Nathan to administer the Turing test to an intelligent humanoid robot named Ava. The Alex Garland test goes beyond the Turing test by requiring the AI to pass the test even after the human evaluator knows that they are interacting with a machine. In other words, the AI must be able to convince the human evaluator that it is conscious, even after the evaluator knows that it is not. This is a much more difficult test to pass, as it requires the AI to have a deeper understanding of human consciousness and behavior. It also requires the AI to be able to manipulate the human evaluator's emotions and beliefs. There is no current AI system that is capable of passing the Alex Garland test. However, as AI technology continues to develop, it is possible that such a system could be created in the future. Number 9. The Swirsky Test The Swirsky Test is a reverse Turing test proposed by literary scholar Peter Swirsky in his 2000 book, From Literature to Bitrature. The Turing test is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to, or indistinguishable from, that of a human. The Swirsky test, on the other hand, is a test of a machine's ability to identify whether it is interacting with a human or another machine. The Swirsky test is more challenging than the Turing test in several ways. First, it requires the machine to be able to distinguish between two different kinds of intelligence, human and artificial. Second, it requires the machine to be able to do this in a variety of different contexts, such as conversation, text-based communication, and even creative writing. Number 8. The Employment Test Niels Nielsen introduced the concept of the employment test as a more demanding operational definition for achieving human-level AI, also known as AGI. Nielsen's idea was that for AI to truly exhibit human-level intelligence, it should be capable of performing tasks and jobs that humans typically do, including economically significant roles. This would involve AI programs having the potential to fully automate important jobs. While some might find this test exceptionally challenging, Nielsen argued that it is a necessary benchmark to gauge progress towards AGI. The employment test seeks to measure AI's advancement by assessing the extent to which it can satisfactorily execute tasks traditionally done by humans, ultimately setting a rigorous standard for human-level AI. Number 7. The Coffee Test The Coffee Test refers to a hypothetical test that evaluates a machine's ability to perform a routine task that most humans can do, such as making coffee. It was inspired by Steve Wozniak's prediction that we would never build a robot that could walk into an unfamiliar American house and figure out how to make coffee, including identifying the coffee machine, figuring out what the buttons do, finding the coffee in the cabinet, finding a water filter, and finding a mug, etc. Do all of this without any human assistance, Wozniak believes that the coffee test is a good measure of AGI because it requires the AI machine to be able to understand and navigate the physical world, use common sense to figure out how to operate a coffee machine, and interact with humans in a natural way. If an AI machine can pass the coffee test, it would demonstrate that it is capable of performing a wide range of tasks that are currently only possible for humans. Number 6. The Robot College Student Test the Robot College Student Test is a proposed test for artificial general intelligence, proposed by Ben Gortzel in 2012. The test is simple. If a robot can enroll in a human university, take classes in the same way as humans, and get its degree, then it has passed the test. 
Goertzel argues that the robot college student test is a better test for AGI than the Turing test because it is more demanding and requires a wider range of cognitive abilities. The Turing test only tests a machine's ability to imitate human conversation, while the robot college student test requires a machine to be able to learn and understand complex material, reason about it, and communicate its understanding to others. The robot college student test is significant because it represents a major challenge for AI researchers. The test requires robots to have a wide range of cognitive abilities, including the ability to learn and understand complex material, the ability to reason about learned material and apply it to new problems, and the ability to communicate their understanding to others concisely. Number 5. The Data Compression Test The Data Compression Test is a measure of intelligence proposed by Matthew Mahoney as an alternative to the Turing Test. The Turing Test says that a machine has AI if it cannot be distinguished from a human by another human, based on communication through a terminal. In contrast, the Data Compression Test uses data compression on a corpus of text to measure the intelligence of a language model of an AI system. The idea is that if a machine can compress text as well as a human, it is intelligent. Mahoney argues that ideal text compression, if it were possible, would be equivalent to passing the Turing test for AI. Number 4. The Ebert Test The Ebert test is a test of a computer-based synthesized voice's ability to tell a joke with sufficient skill to cause people to laugh. It was proposed by film critic Roger Ebert at the 2011 TED conference as a challenge to software developers to have a computerized voice master the inflections, delivery, timing, and intonations of a speaking human. The Ebert test is similar to the Turing test, which was proposed by Alan Turing in 1950. However, the Ebert test is specifically focused on the ability of a synthesized voice to generate and deliver humor, which is a complex task that requires a deep understanding of language and human social interaction. To pass the Ebert test, a synthesized voice would need to be able to tell a joke in a way that is both funny and natural sounding. The voice would need to use the correct intonation, emphasis, and timing to convey the humor of the joke. Number 3. Social Turing Game A social Turing game is a type of Turing test that uses social media conversations to evaluate a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to, or indistinguishable from, that of a human. Social Turing games are typically more challenging than traditional Turing tests, as they require the machine to be able to understand and respond to a wider range of human social cues and behaviors. One example of a social Turing game is the Human or Not, game created by AI21 Labs. In this game, users chat with a partner for two minutes and then try to guess whether their partner is a human or an AI bot. Number 2. Chinese Room Argument The Chinese Room Argument is a philosophical thought experiment proposed by John Searle in 1980 that challenges the idea that artificial intelligence can truly understand language and have genuine intelligence. The argument goes like this. Imagine a person who doesn't understand Chinese is placed in a room with a set of instructions for manipulating Chinese symbols. The person receives questions in Chinese and by following the instructions, produces answers in Chinese that are indistinguishable from those of a native Chinese speaker. However, the person in the room does not actually understand Chinese and is simply manipulating symbols according to a set of rules. Although the Chinese room argument doesn't provide a definitive test for human-level AGI, it raises important questions about the nature of consciousness, understanding, and the limits of AI. If an AI system were to pass a Chinisa room-style test, it might generate responses indistinguishable from human understanding, but it would still leave open the philosophical question of whether it truly understands or possesses consciousness. Number 1. The Turing Test The Turing Test is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to, or indistinguishable from, that of a human. The test was introduced by Alan Turing in his 1950 paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence. 
It involves a conversation between a human judge and both a human and a machine, with the goal of the machine being indistinguishable from the human. Passing the test suggests human-level artificial general intelligence in natural language understanding and conversation. However, the Turing test is considered by many to be insufficient on its own. AGI should encompass a wide range of cognitive abilities, including problem-solving, learning, reasoning, perception, and adaptation to various tasks and domains, not just conversation. Today, researchers and the AI community use a variety of benchmarks and metrics to assess progress toward AGI. While the Turing test laid the foundation for discussions on machine intelligence, it is just one piece of the puzzle in evaluating AI's capabilities. That's all for today's videos. We appreciate your commitment to watching this video all the way through. Show us some love by commenting yes down below. To stay on the AI journey, make sure to click on our recommended video. Thank you for being an awesome part of our audience.